Her brutal murder shocked Britain. And now an independent report into the killing of Sarah Everard has found the man responsible should never have been a police officer and that several opportunities to stop him offending were missed. Wayne Cousins is serving a whole life sentence for rape and murder. He was off duty when he kidnapped Ms Everard, who was 33, under the guise of an arrest. The chair of the inquiry into his conduct and background says without a radical overhaul of police vetting and recruitment, there's nothing to stop another Cousins operating in plain sight. With more, here's our Home Affairs correspondent, June Kelly. He was a predatory sex offender in a police uniform, a criminal with state-sanctioned powers. Wayne Cousins should never have been allowed to become a police officer and continual flawed vetting meant he was able to stay in his role despite a series of red flags. These are among the stark conclusions of today's inquiry report into Cousins. It examined his career, his behaviour and the way he was vetted. The Metropolitan Police Service told the inquiry in 2022 that they would still have recruited him if provided with the same information. I found this astonishing. Now is the time for change. Without a significant overhaul, there is nothing to stop another wing cousins operating in plain sight. The report describes how in 2004 and 2008, Kent Police turned down Cousins' application to join, but allowed him to work as a special constable. In 2011, another force, the Civil Nuclear Constabulary, took him on as a full-time officer, despite a recommendation that he shouldn't get through the vetting because of his heavy debts. In 2018, he successfully applied to join the Metropolitan Police. Here, the report found the vetting was flawed. An indecent exposure allegation was one of the concerns about him, which was on the system, but appeared to be missed. There are no words that I can use that can adequately express to the Everett family just how sorry we are across the whole of policing. I was left aghast at the catalogue of missed opportunities, errors, red flags to stop Wayne Cousins. The report describes how Wayne Cousins used his police powers to falsely arrest Sarah Everard on a street in Clapham in South London during the Covid lockdown in 2021. Here, showing Sarah his warrant card and accusing her of breaching lockdown rules. Cousins then drove Sarah 80 miles to Kent, where he raped and strangled her. A week after Sarah's disappearance, Wayne Cousins was arrested. Described as a man of diverse and deviant sexual interests, he allegedly committed a very serious sexual assault against a child barely in her teens before he joined the police. At a McDonald's drive through in the days before he abducted Sarah, he indecently exposed himself to staff more than once. He's also alleged to have possessed indecent images of children. The coming days will see the third anniversary of Sarah Everard's death. In the report, her family welcome its recommendations. They say the loss of Sarah pervades every part of their lives. June Kelly, BBC News. Well, Maggie Blythe is Deputy Chief Constable of the College of Policing. She was also the lead for violence against women and girls at the National Police Chiefs Council until last year. She said what followed Sarah Everard's murder was a watershed moment for policing as well as for society. There hasn't been a moment since I took my role that I haven't focused on this and the need for policing to improve in how it responds to violence against women and girls. This is a significant, it's an endemic issue for all of us that must be treated with the utmost seriousness. So firstly, first and foremost, this is un about understanding these crimes have to be treated as a national threat. An epidemic and a national threat on the same level as counter-terrorism and serious and organised crime. And we have mobilised policing to put violence against women and girls on that same level. We've set national standards over the last two years and we've reinforced to our officers on the front line the need to focus on investigations that are related to crimes against women and girls. But you only need to look at the statistics to see how far we still have to go. 
Well, I'm joined now by Mayanna Pope Weiderman from the group The Gemini Project, which is a survivor led initiative which works to end sexual violence. Thanks very much for joining us here on BBC News. I'm going to begin by asking you for your reaction to the findings, but it is important to tell our viewers why you became involved in this campaign work, and that's because your cousin, Gaia, had reported being raped at 16 by a man who was later convicted of sexual offences against other women. Um, so let's talk about this inquiry today. Are you um, pleased with the findings? Well, thank you so much for having me. And yes, you know, Having also lost somebody I loved following a string of police failings to investigate a serial child sex offender, not within the police, but within the community, um, I have some frame to imagine how the Everard family must be feeling today. Um, response to what's been announced so far, it's a national scandal, but, you know, we fear the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the extent to which misogyny and apathy compromises the investigation of sexual offences, you know, to the point, as we just heard, that allegations were ignored over a period of 20 years. I mean, the reality is, I don't think many people who themselves have tried to report harassment or abuse to the police, whether that's a community perpetrator or a perpetrator within the police, is going to be at all shocked by any of what has been announced today. Uh, what is a relief to see is that, you know, the case is getting this issue, the public scrutiny that we so desperately need to effect change. We were listening there to uh, someone from a police group who talked about sexual violence towards women as an epidemic that should be taken as seriously as other national threats. Um, you know, do you think that the conversation has now shifted since the death of Sarah Everard in a positive way? What more needs to be added to that conversation? I think the conversation has shifted in terms of public awareness, and that is vital because what we're going to need actually to see meaningful accountability and meaningful change is significant public pressure. We have seen review after review, case after case, survivor after survivor failed, cases collapsing, um, the time to trust the police to the police to police themselves is over. Um, and, you know, I think what what has been announced today really shows is that both in vetting and investigation um, generally, uh, these issues are systemic and they are not restricted to the Metropolitan Police. They are national in nature and they mean that serial abusers are not being held to account, especially within the police, but also in society as a whole. Cousins is now behind bars, but the officers who failed to investigate each one of his historic crimes are probably still in post and potentially still making those kinds of judgment calls on a daily basis. Um, this is exactly why the Gemini Project is campaigning and asking everyone to support our campaign for the Gaia Principle, which is being considered in Parliament as an amendment to the Criminal Justice Bill and is named in memory of my cousin, who died at the age of 19 following just such failings. The amendment will make the kinds of failures highlighted today a misconduct issue, so that if an officer repeatedly shows that they can't do their job, they can lose their job. You know, I think mm -hmm. it will mean essentially that survivors who have failed in the way that my cousin was failed, in the way that unfortunately, I mean, you know, the, the context here of a society in which police are bringing charges in less than 2% of rape cases is, is profoundly relative. It shows that we need this level of individual accountability um, and we need to put this you know, narrative around a few rotten apples to one side uh, and see serious, meaningful, independent oversight and accountability for the way the police are just failing time and time again to properly take rape and serious sexual offences and investigate them thoroughly. OK, Mayanna pope Wideman, thank you very much for sharing your thoughts on today's story and also sharing what happened to your cousin Gaia and how thank you're you. calling for changes in Gaia's memory.